Hi everyone, here's the piece we're going to be working on today. We're going to be using our um, sort of palette of browns today. Uh, some black and some highlights, some light greens and some whites to create a horizontal, uh, dark, kind of moody landscape. I'm going to start by further stimulating our senses um, by using my favorite incense stick from Rug & Weave. Once I've done that, I'm going to place uh, my backing with my cotton paper, um, adhere to it with some double-sided tape, and then we can select our watercolors. So going into our set, we're going to be looking for um, three to four colors. Um, I'm looking for my sepia here, which is my all-time favorite. I love it. The granulation in this color is unreal. Um, I'm going to complement that with uh, raw umber, which will bring a little bit more warmth to the color, and then uh, darken all that with our Mars Black, which I do really enjoy using. So, my favorite brush, the Round 18 Princeton Newton. I love it, picks up a lot of pigment. Uh, with that, you'll need a cloth and some water, and we can get started. So, I'm going to show you my palette. It's a bit of a a thing of organized chaos, but I, I do love it and I, this is how I typically like to set things up. So I'm just going to place my three colors into one of my compartments. Um, again, the uh, Burnt Umber, the Sepia, and my Mars Black. And I'm just putting these all three together because I know I'm going to be mixing them and I typically, once they dry, I like to do that with all my pieces. So I don't mind them being in the same little space. My Mars Black, a little bit dry. I note to self, get a new tube of Mars Black, but I think I've got just enough for today. Um, so that will work. And I'm going to, using my brush and some clean water, I'm going to activate my paint and create a pool of water and, and darken that pool of water until I reach a really nice, rich color value. Um, that will be the sort of base of my piece. So my brush picks up a lot of water um, with sort of each each time I dab it into the into my clean water. So I, this takes a little bit of time. The, the bigger the brush, the longer it takes just to get that pool to be really quite quite full and and rich. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so taking. Uh, quite a bit of paint with my brush. I'm going to apply my first sort of base um, base layer and this has a lot of pigment. You can already see the paint sort of granulating and um, collecting into these tiny little clusters of pigment. Um, and I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to slowly dip it into the water, cleaning it just ever so slightly so that I'm removing paint slowly as I go. And I'm going to work my way up and again soften that color value uh, towards the top of my of my piece of paper. Towards the bottom I'm going in again with some Mars Black and I'm creating uh, some strokes of paint that I know will dry to create what will feel sort of like a rolling hill uh, with some darker sort of uh, highlights um, and low lights which will really make the the watercolor underpainting feel natural. You can also go in, constantly dry your brush and lift color off the paper um, for a little bit, not too long, because once you pass a certain point, really you can't lift too much paint, paint, paint off that paper. So here, looking really closely, I'm getting a lot of texture, a lot of pigment in some spots, and as the paint will continue to dry, um, those bleeds will soften and create a really nice effect. Moving on, let's pick some soft pastels. From my set, I'm going to pick a few colors that are going to complement and be quite similar to the underpainting with the watercolor. So I've got these three here, some browns and sort of a cooler brown. With that, I'm going to use my mid-tones, um, a sort of a raw umber, a lighter uh, shade of green and some warm light beige colors that will create and complement the dark and create some highlights. So I'm just adding a few colors that I know work well together that I'm gonna 
place uh, as little bits and florals throughout the piece. Can't do anything without white. Creates a lot of um, uh, sort of drama and, and glow to the piece. So as my piece is drying, I'm loving the way it's looking. It's looking soft. There's some really nice brush strokes. And I think the pastels are gonna look really nice once we start applying them onto the piece. So once your paper is fully dry, um, you wanna take a look and just sort of assess. I'm seeing these, these horizontal lines that are creating these natural rolling sort of hills in my landscape. And I'm gonna work with those and use my soft pastels to further sort of accentuate that. So taking, starting with sort of my darkest colors, I'm just going in and creating further texture I'm placing these uh, strokes sort of intuitively as I go, um, not focusing too much on each stroke, but working collectively sort of as a whole. You can also go in, I'm softening some of the strokes with my finger just to create a bit of softness between the watercolor and the soft pastel. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. So I'm gonna go in and start lightening, um, lightening some of my sections where I have, uh, let's say the top of a mound or where I'm gonna later on put some lighter strokes. I'm going in with this nice brown and moving through my piece and just adding that in very loosely. Just continuing with um, working through to my lighter colors, creating, uh, well, beginning to create sort of a, uh, a space where I will lighten my piece and I'm moving through with my lighter colors to begin to sort of soften into that. This color I really love. It's sort of a nice... Um, taupe color but it has some warmth to it and um, being careful not to place my uh, lighter sort of highlight in the very middle of my page I'm going to place it sort of just slightly off center to the right and I'm using this color to begin to focus into that so I'm just going to use a few more colors and then skip over to my highlights um, here I'm just going in with my white sort of the edge of my pastel and placing the pastel down on the page and then just pulling the color either up or down in either direction to create these sort of horizontal strokes of light. And I'm working that way, that sort of up the page into the sky. Um, and then that will sort of inform sort of the formation of the clouds. I'm really starting to like how this is looking. Um, I like the composition of it, but I also like the the soft um, the soft reflection that is starting to happen between the sky and the ground, and I, that looks really nice. So next, I'm using this really nice sage green color. I'm creating some complement strokes to um, that rustic brown that I have. And I'm going in and just softening. Uh, the horizon and then creating some uh, sharper strokes with the edge of my pastel. So I like that, I'm pretty happy with the way it's looking. Um, I'm gonna start working on the sky and I'm gonna basically reflect um, in a very soft, soft way, some of the colors that we used um, on the ground into the sky, into the clouds. So I'm taking that same green and I'm just slowly, very gently rubbing it into the sky and I'm using my white to create some definition in my clouds. 
uh, very light, soft strokes um, that would illustrate sort of the edges of the clouds and some light peeking through. I keep checking back and looking at the ground and seeing where I want that lighter highlight to come through. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm just going in and softening, um, softening some of the edges between the dark and the light pastels with my midtones. Some of the low lights in the clouds, I'm using again this mid sort of taupe color and onto the edges, sort of towards the edge of the page. I'm using that same color and I'm softening it um, to create some depth. And then the last thing I'm going to do just before the final sort of highlight stage is I'm going in with this medium gray and I'm defining and adding a little bit of volume to my clouds and darkening the piece just ever so slightly um, and creating a little bit more contrast between my highlight point and the edges of the piece. I just noticed I just need a few more sort of little tiny strokes of color um, that complement the, the ground. Um, and then my last step really is just going in and adding a little bit of glow and a little bit of sort of light um, either coming from light in the piece or houses that have their lights on, just little tiny um, strokes of the white pastel to really create some texture and bring the whole piece together. And there it is, there's our finished piece. I'm quite happy with it. I really like the mid-brown tones and the sort of darker ground towards the bottom of the piece. The texture is unreal and I'm really quite happy with how it's turned out. If you are creating pieces at home and you're following along, please share them with me. I would love to see um, how these videos are helping you and uh, inspiring you to do your own art at home. Until next time.